Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here for yet another episode of Civilization VI Beginner Basics, where today we're going to be taking a look at the UI or user interface of the game and telling you how you can use it to help better your game and just how you can use it to find information that you might need if you're playing your first game. Because I know Civ VI has a lot of menus and there's a lot of information in a lot of those menus. So today I'm going to show you where to find all of this to make it nice and easy your first time around. So let's start up here in the top left. So in the top left is where you find kind of like your progression related information. So this will give you the yields that you are generating in your empire, such as science, which will help you research techs, culture, which will help you research civics, faith per turn, which is useful for religions, gold per turn, which you can obviously use to buy things, uh, tourism per turn, which applies to culture victory, diplomatic favor, which you, which you can use to vote in the World Congress, and then the number of trade route capacity that you have and the number of active trade routes, as well as your progression towards envoys, which you can use to influence city-states. And then over here, it'll tell you um, information about the strategic resources that you have, as well as how many you are accumulating per turn and how many you have and your capacity as well. Over here is where you can find things such as the tech tree, uh, the civic tree, information about your government and policy cards, Religion information, this also will tell you how many religions are available to be founded. So if this were at 4 out of 5, we would know that we are able to found one more religion in the world. This also gives you information about great people. You can also see uh, which ones there are currently available to be recruited, as well as which ones have previously been recruited. Information on great works, world climate, uh, your governor menu, which will show you all of the governors as well as their bonuses. So if you're wondering which ones you want to get, you can hover over any of the bonuses and it will give you the information. And then the history timeline as well, which keeps track of notable events in your civilization's history that will give you era score. Down here in the bottom left, we have a lot of map related options. So you can see here, these are the lenses, which will give you information about various things in the game. For beginners, there are two that I think can be helpful. One of them is the settler lens, which will show you where you are able to be able to found cities at, as well as what the status of water or uh, coastal water or no water is. So this will be helpful as we go and talk about settling cities in future videos. The other one that I think can be a little bit helpful is the Empire Lens, just because it shows you where your city borders are as well as what the adjacency bonuses are on the districts that you have placed down. The map options here, there not many of these are really super helpful and I rarely ever actually open this up, but there is one that I think is very important and that is the yield icon. So you can see here that on my tiles I have these little icons such as three corns and one gear here, which corresponds to three food and one production. So turning on these yield icons, you can either press Y or you can click the little checkbox here and this will toggle these on or off. I would recommend that you keep these on because this gives you a lot of information about the land that is available and it's going to be very helpful for helping you decide where you want to settle future cities because you can see this land right here, it's got quite a few yields on it. But if I come over here to this desert, not very many yields, probably don't want to settle there. The other stuff in this menu is just, you know, fairly basic. You can check the grid, turn that on or off, depending on whether you like it. And you can also turn on labels for things such as volcanoes. You can turn those on or off uh, to your own liking. Here we have map tax as well, which I also would recommend you use. This just helps you plan out where you want to put things in your empire. So you can see I already have one over here, but let me clear that. So say you want to settle a city up here, you can click the map tax and add a pin for a city center. And you can do this for any number of things. It just helps you plan out what you want to do. We also have map search. So you can use this to search for things such as resources or wonders. So if I search for horses, it will highlight the ones on the map. And if you click the little arrow, it will take you to where they are. Over here we also have strategy view, so this is very helpful if you have a really, really bad PC and you struggle to run the game even on low settings. This will make everything 2D from a top-down perspective. This makes the game way easier to run on your computer, so if you're really struggling to run the game, then you can play it like this. Obviously the graphics don't look quite as pretty, but it is an option if that is something that you would like. Then the last thing you can do here is show the full screen map. Over here on the right, we have things that are related to the progression of a single turn. So this right here will tell you what you need to do next. And it'll also tell you the future things that you have to do after you satisfy one of these. So you can see the first task that it gives us is to send our envoys. And the other task it's going to give us is to give units uh, orders based on, you know, the units that have available movement. Also around here, you can find information about your era score and how much you need to advance into the next era. 
The other thing that you get is notifications over here. So these will be information about things that are happening either in your empire or other people's. So you can see right here that it's telling me that one of my cities needs more housing. So in order to address these, you can left click and it will show you the area of interest for the notification. And then you can right click them to get rid of them. Up here in the top is kind of like the miscellaneous stuff, I guess I would uh, I would call it that. So right here you have all the information about leaders, and if you click on one of these leader portraits, it will take you to the diplomacy screen for them, which we'll talk about in future videos. A lot of people always ask how I get these ribbons here, which will show me the yields of other players as well. So to get these, you go to the game menu, options, interface, and then show yields in HUD ribbon. You turn this to either always show, or you can show it on mouse over as well. And the last few menus that we have up here, so we have World Rankings, which will show you everybody's progress towards the various victory types in the game. We also have the City State menu, which will show you all the city states that you have met in the game, as well as the number of envoys you have in them, and the bonuses that you're getting from them. So this is where you go to assign your envoys, so to do so, you can see you just click the little arrow there, and it will put another envoy in the City State. We also have the trade route overview, which will show you both trade routes that you are sending out to people, as well as all of the ones people are sending to you, and it will show you the bonuses that both you and them receive from them as well. Era progress will tell you how many turns you have until the next era advances, as well as your current era score, and the era score ranges that you need for the various ages in the next era. And the last menu here is the list of reports. So this is a lot of information about the yields that you generate in your cities. It gives you a very nice breakdown of where all of these yields come from. It also can show you all of the resources that you do have improved as well as where your amenities are going and how many of each resource you have. You also have the city status menu which will show you the happiness of your cities as well as how many amenities you need to keep them happy or make them happy. And then we have the gossip menu, which will tell you information about other civs in the game and what they are doing. So, like you can see here that there's a rumor has it that Gaul has just declared war on Mohenjo-Daro. We know that Egypt has denounced Japan. So this is all stuff about other civs and what they are doing. There's two more things that I want to talk about in this video. So one of them is on the city screen. So you can see that if you click on cities, you get a number of things that you can select down here. We're not going to talk about any of these in this video, but the one thing that I want to show just because it can be fun for new players is if you toggle city details and click up here, this will allow you to rename your city. So maybe we name this Eugene City. If you don't know, Eugene is my cat. And then you press enter and that will allow you to rename your cities. The other one thing that I wanted to show is how to turn on quick movement and quick combat. So you can see here, if I move this archer, they move practically instantly, they move very fast, but that's not the case if you don't have quick movement on, as I will show here. So to turn this on, what you do is you go up into the options once again, and you go to game, and then quick combat and quick movement you can enable right here. So I would recommend this if you think that the game is a little bit sloggy because I feel like with quick movement and quick combat turned off, especially if you have a lot of units in a war, it can take minutes for every single turn just to watch all of the animations. And, you know, the animations are cool, but after you've seen them a lot of times, you probably don't need to see them anymore. So you just want to keep going and playing the game. So that's how you turn those on. So thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, if not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for some more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.